So I'd like to thank everyone for joining this afternoon. This is going to be our Ingram Micro Lenovo Infrastructure Solutions Group, or Lenovo ISG, September Lunch and Learn. Today we will be focusing on Lenovo, Ingram Micro Lenovo Edge Compute IoT go-to-market strategy. My name is Melissa Bernard and I'm the Vendor Business Manager for Lenovo ISG here at Ingram Micro. I'd like to encourage you all to make this as collaborative as possible today. So if you have questions or feedback, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll address them as we are able throughout the, the presentation. And if we don't get to it, we will surely reach out to you afterwards and get back to you on that. Also, there was a survey that went out yesterday. Um, we'd really appreciate if you took the time to complete the survey and get it back to us as we will be using that to going forward to see if we can help you and your partners in your IoT journey. With that, I'd like to pass it on to Ron Corley, the Solution Development Executive for Lenovo ISG here at Ingram Micro. Take it away, Ron. From you. You need to unmute yourself. There we go. There this go. is embarrassing. Sorry about that. All right. Um, I'm regaining. Oops. And of course, technical difficulties. Give me two seconds to pull that back up. We are seeing your screen. It's just not in um... presenter mode. Yeah, I was having some trouble sliding across my mouse pad. Sorry go. about that, folks. But welcome, as Melissa did say, I'm Ron Corley, Solutions Development Executive, um, and extremely excited to, to present to you all today um, some of the things that we've been working on here at Ingram Micro um, to, to build bridges within um, some specific sectors um, of business and, and open up new revenue streams for our partner community. I'll first be going through why edge computing in general, where Lenovo sits um, in edge computing and how that uh, correlates to IoT. Um, and then I'll be going over the actual solutions that uh, we've been developing here at Ingram Micro, as well as um, discussing the benefits of uh, adopting these solutions into your um, into your uh, IoT data strategy portfolio as a business partner. Then I'll pass it over to Savio Lee, Director of IoT Canada, to discuss the BTC and smart traffic monitoring, um, who will then pass it over to Kuna uh, Kanthasami, um, who will discuss the IoT Center of Excellence, and he is the Director of Global IoT Solution Architecture. After that, we'll finish up with some Q&A. As Melissa said, though, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please do feel free to drop them into the chat, and we will try to get to them as soon as we can. So Edge Compute, what is Edge Compute? I, I know most of us here um, from the partner community already understand how this technology um, impacts current technologies today, but just in case we don't to level set, Edge Compute is simply bringing the processing power of servers um, closer to where the data is being collected. Lenovo is uniquely positioned um, in this regard by um, creating a portfolio of servers um, a family of servers or a family of gateways that offer these solutions um, for IoT. Specifically today, we're going to talk about the SE350, which is pictured above, um, which is a unique form factor server, specifically um, can be utilized for remote and industrial IoT scenarios. And so edge computing in general, the reason why it is important to uh, the compute process as we move forward, um, with our technological advancements is optimizing the network and making sure that latency, number one, isn't an issue for applications that need um, faster reaction time for the data that's being processed, as well as being able to um, interweave data into a single network for data protection. So with this unique innovation that Lenovo brings to the table. And I say unique because there are no other vendors, x86 vendors or otherwise, that bring this type of solution um, to the market um, when it comes to IoT, remote industrial IoT scenarios. Uh, we decided to partner with the Ingram IoT teams um, in differing levels, US IoT 
Canada IoT and global IoT to address problems that are already um, existing in scenarios like smart cities, such as reducing utility costs in forms of LED lighting, um, helping with traffic analysis and data collection, um, as well as reducing safety um, and enforcing safety um, safety um, laws or, or uh, parameters. Um, all of this is, of course, when, when you start enforcing safety uh, parameters, you also increase revenue back to cities uh, to allow them to operate more efficiently. And then we also are addressing other types of ROIs that aren't as, um, as easily recognizable, like smart parking that provide livability back to uh, cities in ways that we haven't been able to uh, provide or cities haven't been able to provide back to constituents um, in the past. And so in, in creating these solutions, uh, we have partnered with some um, of the other Intel uh, partners under the Ingram IoT umbrella, like IA Connects and Uncanny Vision, to help deliver these types of ROIs back to uh, your, your end user um, customers. And just in case um, it's unclear exactly what we're doing here, we are layering on multiple um, vendors that are IoT ecosystem friendly already into a virtualized environment utilizing the SC350 as the backbone for all of the processing that's necessary uh, for this environment. All of the data that's being collected within these environments is on a single network protecting the PII or personal identif identifying information that state and local um, constituents are concerned about. And we have additional flexibility and security options within our architecture um, by utilizing hybrid cloud scenarios with Microsoft Azure, um, as well as Red Hat um, for security within containerized operations. We're also focused on smart manufacturing. Um, this space is a little bit more concrete than smart cities, where we have a number of um, solutions that will impact the manufacturing industry today um, um, in a very, very, very uh, large way that creates results both back to the industry itself as well to uh, back to the employees of the industry. We're focusing on computer vision um, to address issues like quality control, inventory, and loss prevention. And we are working towards utilizing data being collected off of PLCs um, within manufacturing scenarios that are analyzed uh, within CMMS um, programs like, um, like IBM's uh, Maximo program to then create actionable items where machine-to-machine -machine communication is possible, saving manufacturers thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars in predictive maintenance um, that we're going to be taking care of for them or helping them address. Uh, and this, of course, has a cascading effect within the manufacturing um, operational uh, risk and, and cost spectrum, um, helping out with safety and a number of other issues that are very, very core to manufacturing. So in summary, with those solutions, brief solutions, high level, uh, we are solving for city safety, reducing utility costs, manufacturing opti optimization, uh, reducing manufacturing operational risk and overall, overall quality of life improvement for citizens and employees. And these are some of the basic solutions or basic um, um, ROIs provided back from IoT applications in general. So that's exactly what we're giving to your end users. From the partner community though, what is in it for you, right? Adopting an IoT data um, strategy portfolio allows our partner community to um, create new lines of recurring revenue through software sales on an annual basis, automatically and overnight growing their businesses. So I'll say that again, partners that decide to adopt an IoT um, strategy portfolio, data strategy portfolio will overnight create new streams of revenue for themselves and grow their business. The other ways that you can grow your business by adapting this uh, IoT uh, strategy is through your MSP practice. So if you already have um, a, a managed service practice through client uh, devices and or data center devices, this is just another way for you to grow that part of your business. 
if managed services is not a part of your business, but you still like to take advantage of the recurring revenue that the software provides, Ingram Micro is uniquely positioned to help you with both uh, taking on or the deployment of the IoT solutions, um, as well as the management of said solutions once they are up and running for you. And just to kind of bring everybody back to the, the um, the main page uh, as to why we're going after manufacturing in smart cities. Um, what we are looking at now is a, a list of the top 10 trends um, in 2020 from or within the uh, IoT application areas. Um, as you see, manufacturing is number one, and so that's obviously something that we can attack currently, and cities are number five. In the middle, two through three, Ingram Micro is strategically uh, positioned to also be impactful in retail um, and energy. Um, transportation, however, is autonomous vehicles and autonomous trucking, so we're not really playing in that space. But we are taking advantage of areas where we are strategically placed to succeed for your customers. And again, Lenovo is strategically uh, positioned to succeed in manufacturing and industrial, as well as smart cities due to the remote uh, location where we can position our um, SE350 service for the backbone of your solutions. Now we know that manufacturing has a set of ROIs that it, or manufacturing, smart manufacturing solutions have a set of ROIs that they provide back to um, their, their industry. Smart city solutions vary very um, vastly depending on the size of the city, where they're at in their IoT data strategy journey. And we recognize that we have not created solutions that are cookie cutter for one size fits all based on the city. Uh, we do have a number of different ways that we can attack um, high level topics like traffic management, parking, public transportation, so on and so forth to be able to provide flexibility and customization for your end users as to how we can best um, benefit them, impact them, help them collect the data that they need to be successful and then grow your business at the same time. Just to recap everything that we've just heard, I know I threw a lot at you. Partners that have an IoT data strategy portfolio will create new streams of annual baseline revenue with the option to expand their MSP practice overnight. That is a fact. Lenovo offers market leading technology um, to power reseller partners, uh, manufacturing customers, machine to machine efficiency gains and or multi vendor smart city IoT data strategy. So if you have manufacturing customers today who are looking for efficiencies in quality assurance and or um, loss prevention um, and, and inventory, we can help them today. Um, tomorrow we'll be able to help them with even more advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, capabilities with the SC350 backed, uh, backing all of those uh, ROIs for you. Ingram Micro helps reseller partners deliver to their end customers with industry leading I am since IoT, oops, sorry, IoT aggregation software um, and end-to-end -end IoT pre-sale scoping, deployment, and managed services. All of these are supported by flexible payment options through Ingram Micro's financial solutions on a monthly, quarterly, annual, or creative basis plan. Now, I mentioned I am since we haven't heard about that yet, but that is the differentiator. Uh, we know that there are other major players. Um, from a distribution standpoint uh, that also have some of the products that we offer within these soft bundles that you've seen. However, the real Ingram difference, the real Ingram difference is IM Sense, the ability to get rid of data silos, aggregate the data, and really allow your customers to gain the most ROI out of their data. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to the creator of IM Sense for Ingram Micro, Savio Lee. Thanks, Ron. And I'm just trying to share my screen right now. Can you see it? Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Savio Lee here, um, business unit leader for digital transformations and IoT at Ingram Micro Canada. Um, you know, Ron spent quite a bit of time um, in terms of, you know, emphasizing on the need of edge computing for breaking silos, 
um, and offloading a lot of the uh, uh, data processing from the cloud and <clears throat> and onto on premise. You know, in the real world of IoT, you know, we see 90, 80 to 90 percent of the opportunity is what we call brownfield. Brownfield is where we do have to play with a lot and connect to a lot of legacy systems to do things like uh, edge com to do things like predictive maintenance, uh, asset health condition monitoring, and so on. So, at a very high level overview, edge has this indispensable responsibility of extracting those. Uh, legacy data that are in the different uh, protocols and ensure protocols interoperability by translating those data, those data and normalizing those data into IoT uh, uh, protocol or IP based protocol. Right. So at the end of the day, Edge has a critical piece in the all overall IoT architecture. Right. Um, a really good example of where IoT plays a really critical role is in the area of um, uh, with, uh, AI based video analytics. Um, as you know, um, over 70% of the internet traffic today is, uh, is, uh, is actually uh, driven by video, right? So, in the world of true uh, uh, video analytics, the power of Edge, that's where the power of Edge comes into being. That if you think about it and you want to do analyze all the multiple video streaming coming in from different um, IP cameras or surveillance cameras to stream all those video to, to the cloud that becomes that creates not not only a lot of latency but that drastically increased cost because you have to do all the analysis of the video in the cloud and also put a lot of load on the applications so to really enable um, efficient analytics of uh, video streams you know that's where edge com um, coming to being. So what we essentially do, did is we put edge AI capabilities and loaded the AI onto the edge on premise to be closer to the video, right? So that the AI will analyze the video and send the meta metadata to I, the, to IM sets. So in this in this context, what our slide is showing is you know we are showing true AI capabilities that can do a wide variety of functions that can be applied across multiple verticals, <laughs> leveraging edge computing from Lenovo, and then because it's a very horizontal solutions, the good thing about the edge in combination with um, uh, in combination with AI-based video analytics is that it does not require any special cameras. It really leverages your existing video surveillance infrastructure. It's cost effective. It's uh, you know drop um, you know drop and almost like almost like a plug and play solutions where you as long as the IP camera has real time RTSP feed. That's all the AI really cares about, right? And then, so what we essentially done is all the edge capabilities that the AI is performing uh, closer to the cameras. We have listed out all the AI capabilities um, from a horizontal perspective, such as hey, in the context of smart cities, object recognition can be used to differentiate traffic types. Pedestrian vehicles, cyclists, motorcyclists may be abundant or missing objects, right? Uh, in the context of geofencing, like what can you do from a smart city perspective? You can do a circuit parameter, lo uh, loitering detections, illegal parkings, and so on. Object counting, uh, it could be used in the context of traffic countings, crowd detection, maybe uh, to ensure social distancing, uh, and even wrong directions, right? So object distance can be used in the context of accident detections, right? When two objects come too close to each other, the AI will automatically trigger. Right, and obviously license plate uh, recognitions. And the good thing is, all these AI capabilities can be overlapped to create a more robust capabilities as well. So, from an architecture point of view, this is what it really looks like. Right, you would have a POE camera going to a cradle point um, IoT gateway, and this is where it could be the Lenovo Edge gateway, it could be the uh, uh, Lenovo SE350 where the AI runs. Right. And from there, it analyzes and process all the video feed. The result of that uh, analysis performed by the AI is really sent to what is called the IMSN platforms, where we have created an application called Smart Traffic Monitoring and so on. Uh, we do take a very open ecosystem approach. We have a lot of customers that ask, we love your dashboard, but we also have a lot of legacy systems where we would make good use of the data that's generated by the AI. So we do have the capabilities where the AI data can also push uh, data into the third party system. So 
this is exactly what, what it looks like um, with the deployment that we've done, right? What you have again is the Lunova gateway, the PC, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Cradle point, um, N2M routers, uh, and this is what it really looks like. It's really a self-contained uh, uh, solutions that Ingram Micro deliver as an end-to-end -end solution that can be re uh, repurposed, redeployed for various use cases and so on. So at the end of the day, you know, it's one thing to have the AI, right? And in the world of IoT, the true value of IoT is in the data. It's one thing to have the AI, but how you really slice and dice the data, it's a whole different scenario, right? Because if you look at, you know, in the world we call it, you know, data is the new oil and the output from the AI, anytime it detects a pedestrian, all the AI does is, for example, it says pedestrian, count is one, that's it, right? Um, vehicle, uh, you know, what type of, uh, it says, hey, I detected an object, it's a vehicle, it's a count of one, what speed it was going with, and what type of vehicle it is, whether it's a car, truck, motorcycles, bus, and so on, and which direction it was going. So similar to in the world of IoT, because a single data point can be used in so many contexts, takes an example of temperature, right? Uh, the you know data that your uh, temperature sensor generated can be used in the context of hey asset health monitoring to see if your machine is breaking down, or can be used in the context of, or uh, can be used in the context of, uh, you know uh, uh, monitoring food qualities or temperature monitoring for pharmaceuticals purpose and so on, right? And because of the need and because of that, there needs to be what is called an IoT application enablement platform, right? The uh, the idea, you know, this is a very critical piece in the entire IoT architecture. Uh, it's an indispensable um, level of the IoT technology stack. Is that you need to have the flexibility to take data from different types of from different sources, aggregate the data to create a single pane of glass, right? And most most importantly, to be able to create use cases for those data, right? So um, you know, at Ingram Micro, we have what is called the I. IM Sense, uh, which is an IoT application enablement platform, it's a very, very horizontal platform that allows you to collect data from multiple sources. It could be your building control system, it could be your PLC from your manufacturing flow, uh, it could be sensors from, it could be data coming in from various uh, wireless IoT sensors, or it could even uh, be coming in from your, your car or, or so on, right? Uh, so it has that IM Sense has that capability to, to ingest data from multi multiple data source, aggregate, aggregated data, and then allows you to rapidly build applications with minimal software coding required. Right? Uh, we also have pre-built um, uh, template and use case uh, pre-built templates for different solutions. Uh, what you're going to see shortly, um, just to give you a feel on what the capabilities of our IM Sense is. You know, we have a uh, uh, template pre-built for, you know, our smart traffic monitoring, or it could be for logistic, it could be for asset tracking, it could be for many other other skills. And the thing of the, uh, and the thing about the template that we've built is that it's never ever 100% completed, right? Because the needs of the customer is so unique, right? The template it will for any specific solution will all, always be approximately 80 to 90% completed, and then your customers or you can customize that template to meet the remaining 10% of the, um, to meet the remaining 10%. So in essence, from a high level overview, uh, IM Sense AEPU application enablement platform allows our partners or end customers to build powerful IoT application in order to visualize and slice and dice the data, right? And the best thing is, as I mentioned, um, we've done a heavy lifting for the last two years where We've gone in at a source code level, uh, identified where the major roadblocks are for our typical IT partners in building an IoT applications, and then took away the need for any partners to build an enterprise applications with little to no software coding uh, knowledge required. Um, it's also a multi-layer tenancy ca uh, capability. So what that means is it's one platform and I can host multiple customers or multiple partners in there. Um, we have created powerful rules engine is probably one of the most powerful I've seen uh, and when I compare it to others uh, platforms out there in the market to create uh, multiple uh, rules engines uh, for events by accompanying multiple data points, right? It has rule-based access as well for an admin, for a user, 
uh, for an executive and things like that. It's got alarms and scheduling. Uh, when a certain threshold has breach, uh, you know, when a certain uh, data points has breached a certain threshold, an alarm is automatically generated and sent through SMS or via emails and things like that. Um, the thing about, you know, uh, IM Sense platform is that it has also, we did the initial heavy lifting of integrating with Ingram's ecosystem of I IoT vendors consisting of 300 plus IoT sensors and gateways. So what that means is we have done the heavy lifting and did the initial 80% of the, uh, the integration at an API level so that it allows you to deliver much quicker solutions and focus on delivering achieving business outcomes for your customers, right? And you know, a lot of, on the last uh, I, I spoke about pre-built templates. Um, on the last point is that IM Sense platform. You know, most of uh, we get a lot of customers that says, "Hey, you know, we love IoT, but we don't want to send it to the cloud, <laughs> right?" It's a, in that sense we are taking the I out of IoT, right? So we have a customers that says, "Can you deploy this platform for us on premise?" So the answer is yes. Uh, we have deployed. Uh, customers, uh, you know, uh, the IMSense platform, you know, as part of a tenant or maybe as part of your private instance or maybe in a hybrid models and so on. So at the end of the day, there is not really one size fit all. And we took a very flexible and modular approach that allows um, you and your customer to pay as you scale without incurring significant cost upfront. Right. Moving on to uh, the next sections. Right. So what you're seeing, oops, I got locked up. I do apologize for that. Yep. So remember, if you remember the C, uh, you know, the data, uh, the metadata that uh, and uh, the the string of data that the AI was generated, and it was just sending in one 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 one, right? And uh, those data are being aggregated and collected by the IM IM Sense application enablement platforms that allows you to slice and dice the data and more importantly, help you to make sense of the data um, and, and analyze the data, right? The data that we're collecting from the AI, it, it was just sending 111 for cyclists, 111 for pedestrians, vehicle counts, average speed, and so on, right? So what this application, in, um, this IM Sense platform is able to do is and collect the data and help you visualize, more importantly, help you visualize the data, right? So for over the last five days, for example, you know what it noticed is that hey, there have been approximately 219 cyclists over the last five days, right? And out of which, 83 of those cyclists are going in the wrong direction, right? Um, it also detected pedestrian. It also noticed a lot more pedestrians, um, you know, uh, than the cyclists. And then it has counted approximately 2,043 pedestrians, right? In terms of vehicles, it counted well over 7,000 vehicles. And the average speed of the, the vehicles over last, for all the vehicles combined over last five days is approximately 35 kilometers per hour, right? And on, the, on by the way, the entire application that you see, uh, you know, if you are, if it was three years ago and we, had, we were to try to build this type of um, dashboard, it would have taken us a month because of the heavy lifting we've done at the back end by taking the software coding out of the equations, we were able to build this application in under two hours, right? It was that quick, right? And it was that busy. Um, what you see, uh, and by the way, the entire dashboard, it's very interactive, right? Uh, you can interact with the data. And what you see out here is really the chart of all the different data points that's been collected. And if you really want to work with the data, you can just simply maximize it, right? And then, you know what? I don't really care about vehicles. I just want to take a look at uh, maybe pedestrian, right? So all, all I have to do is uncheck, uncheck, right? And right now I'm only looking at the data for pedestrian, right? Um, so uh, the city has been, this is by the way, a production environment uh, that the city has given us, uh, 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 allow us to showcase the solutions that they have deployed. And then, you know, out here is the bar chart um, that really just shows you, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, um, what the traffic distribution is like. Obviously, vehicles can, uh, accounts for maximum um, the uh, majority of the traffic and so on, right? And then from there, these charts are interactive. You can export the widget data. It can be exported in the form of uh, CSV, XL, or XLX. Uh, X. Uh, more importantly, is this IM Sense platform has an open API at the back end as well, right? And if there is ever a need 
to integrate with um, the customer in-house applications and so on, we can easily make the data available to the third party as well. And those, and then from a reporting perspective, we can automate the reports so that maybe once a month or once a week, um, the platform can automatically build that um, build the report report required and email it to the uh, user and so on. So what you have seen in here is really the breakdown of you know the different traffic types and things like that, right? You have cyclists, um, and actually, actually we can we broke it down by lane as well, whether it's uh, you know southbound, northbound, and so on, right? And the funny thing is, it also collected data on uh, cyclists going in the wrong directions, and the city was able to effectively use this data uh, to minimize the number of uh, traffic uh, cyclists going in the wrong directions. Uh, because uh, you know, when they initially deployed the solutions, they noticed that approximately at two, one to two p.m. there was a spike in the number of cyclists going in the wrong directions. They were, so they was able to strategically place a uh, you know law enforcement in, in that area, <laughs> right? Uh, pedestrians, uh, you know, pedestrian was a big one for us. Uh, that's what the city, city really wanted, right? And then what we found out that we were starting at, at some point we started to notice uh, that there were pedestrians actually walking on the road as well, right? Um, and what they essentially did was, you know, the, uh, the city was actually able to take the data and says as part of, uh, uh, as part of next year's project, uh, urban planning, whatever, we need to make sure that we, uh, we, we, we make provision to expand the pedestrian lane as well, right? Because we were detecting a pedestrian walking on the, on the bike lanes as well, right? Out here, um, it's really, you know, uh, again, just vehicles by uh, and so on. So by the way, it can go as right now, there was no requirements to detect vehicle type, but the vehicle do, uh, the AI do have the capabilities to recognize different types of vehicle types so that it's a car, it's an SUV, it's a truck, or it's a trailer and so on, right? So common, common elements uh, for all the widgets that we have put in place is that it's very interactive. Uh, you can export it, you can change your own data streams, whether you want to sum it or whether you want to average it or whether really you want to count it and so on. So here's a, you know, just a brief high level overview of how, you know, something uh, a very granular level of data generated by the AI and also possibly by, you know, various IoT devices or control system can be aggregated to allow customers take a data driven approach in the decision making. With that being said, I'm going to hand it off to Kuna who's going to uh, talk about the sense of excellence. Thank you, sir. You. Let me share my. Be able to see my slides. Yes, Kuna, we can see it. Thank you. But you're very soft, Muna. Is it good enough? That's better. OK. So my name is Kuna Kandasam. I'm part of the uh, global IoT team in Ingram um, headquarters, uh, uh, residents in Irvine, California. So I'm going to showcase for what we have and we are, what we built at the brand new Central of Excellence for IoT. I'll walk you through the virtually uh, because of the COVID and everything. It will be good if we invite everybody in one location in our COE. We can walk you through all the demos and cool uh, <clears throat> showcases and everything. Uh, in our Central of Excellence, we have uh, several different pillars, like uh, four pillars. We are one of the pillars, we actually do the lots of services for partners and vendors and also the end customers in uh, building a solution on behalf of them or do the proof of concept and then do the production implementation and certifications or even do the design consultants for the OT and connecting to the IT level of their oper operational technology and IT uh, connecting it and also we do the several different IoT uh, training classes mm -hmm. as well. Part of the certification as a services on behalf of Microsoft last year we did the uh, plug and play certification for uh, many different vendors like uh, DG Aruba and uh, <clears throat> you can name in any of the things in our catalog and we certified and uh, published it in the Microsoft Azure device certification catalog publicly available. So it that's 
devices can plug and playable for Azure IoT Hub and Azure IoT Central, and you don't need to write any code or anything. You can just plug and it will work automatically work. We verify and certified. So device, we work with the device builders and also solution builders to connect everything, and also we uh, develop it and automate the certification for AWS, Azure, and also we normally go to the PTCs and also Siemens and other different vendors for the IoT and OT level of so, so on there. So these are the things we also did, and we also work with the Lenovo to go to market for several of the their um, extra related. Uh, devices. One of the biggest things we have, it is very state of the art IoT lab. We have all kinds of equipment, including the private LTE and the 5G uh, technologies, and also uh, new technologies coming into the market coming from Cisco, HP, or Lenovo, <coughs> or any other uh, private LTE and uh, Verizon and T Mobile and ATT. We built a solution around it for the IoTs and different markets. So far, we work on behalf of the manufacturers, on behalf of Microsoft and Lenovo. We put together Smart Factory. It can, I will show you in a minute. It'll work with the, um, uh, heavily certified for Le Lenovo devices for edge computing. And also we're working with the uh, very big uh, major ma manufacturers and the pharmaceutical uh, company to do the Pharma uh, call chain um, tracking. And one of the initiation we done it for India and also we did for here for COVID vaccine distribution for the temperature monitoring stuff for there. And also we certify lots of solutions around it. Uh, namely, we can say HP Aruba for smart building and smart spaces and smart parking and smart cities. And the Cisco's also we built lots of um, uh, real time monitoring, real time trackings for the warehouses, smart factories and hospitals, wayfinders and everything. So let me show you the our how's our show you look like so i'm going to drive you through i hope you guys can still see my slide so this is our really exist coe in physically and then <clears throat> i'll show you in this area this is our executive brief center and conference. There, are, this actually um, listed for the many uh, executives or partners to come and present it and do the co selling, co marketing. Um, they can do that and utilize the facilities. And then in here, we have a smart build, a smart um, agriculture co sponsorship and partner with the, some of the edge computing with the Lenovo and also with the Microsoft technologies. You can see this is one of the really good cool stuff and industrial 4.0. You can see in here we actually have edge computing mounted here with the Lenovo's and recognize it. I'll show you some of the demos in a minute. And there is actually the small retails. This all these exhibitions are functional. If you move some of the uh, this is a smart shelf. If you move one, some of the jackets or take it out from the shelf, it'll actually alert to you and it will tell you there is something wrong or somebody actually uh, shelf lifted. So in here, show you. This is the things, one of the things uh, Savio is showing it is a smart building and uh, smart uh, spacing technologies are connected, aggregated technologies, and this is a nice dashboard on it. And this is one of the smart sealed cities, real street light. We have it here, it's fully functional, and you can come and touch and feel before you really deploy the technologies to the customers. And this is, oops. This is one of the things uh, we also explaining it. We do the um, registration number plate uh, monitor. These two examples are real one. We actually utilize it for our warehouses whenever the trucks come and we actually monitor their license plates and the 
DOD numbers and they automatically recorded how many vehicles are come, how many vehicles are going out. And this is a, one of the major initiative we do. For Industrial 4.0, you can see the all the conveyor belt vibration technologies are there. And also we have various medvics, uh, X realities and cards and also the technologies are there. So let me show to you. Any questions so far? I'll walk you to the next slide. So this is it. I showed you a few minutes ago one of that our industrial 4.0. This is a real customer use cases we did. The customers, what they're trying to do, the visual quality inspection for the electric circuit board is one of the robots actually push, uh, put it in the conveyor belt. We take a high quality video out of it and we utilize the Lenovo's edge computing to do the visual inspection and the um, artificial and machine learning technologies to validate the which electric uh, circuit board is have a uh, quality issues. And if that edge is triggered, something wrong with the electric um, board will trigger to the second um, robot arm there is something wrong if it is wrong it'll put it in the red box and if it is put it into the green box if it is everything okay so this is a demo we did but in the real world is actually arms are is uh, six seven feet high it's pretty uh, kuboto so kuboto uh, very heavy equipment is actually on the uh, industrial standard one so in the in the nutshell, we actually go through the conveyor belt, capture the images, and do the edge computing, and do all the quality validation, visual inspection, do everything in the edge computing. It's very soundproof and everything, very less noisy for us, especially for when we're hosting on this kind of small environment, and also dust proof. And then we actually once we data are recovered and we send it to the Azure Microsoft Azure. And then we do the labeling and trainings and then send it to you back to the dashboard. It will tell you how many qualities and engine bots are qualities and how much the end of the day you can have it, uh, how much and which manufacturer sending the electricity board is actually bad or good. So the next one we did very uh, interestingly in our lab, I told you we do the laws of certifications. We worked with the Microsoft <coughs> Azure and the Lenovo's and pre-certified with the uh, manufacturing and we're calling a smart factory fabric and we have lots of uh, use cases and ready-made and ready to go built top of the Azure IoT Central and we have lots of templates and then ready to deployable templates are published in the IoT Central, Azure IoT Central and then with the configuration of the Lenovo Edge Computing and then you just click of a button and now uh, hour or two, you can up and running the several of these use cases and also the uh, dashboards are there. So another one we did at uh, Savio said is in the, when you go to the manufacturing operation technology level, not everybody like to work with the cloud and then they would like to keep the data locally and sometimes they want to have it on a, a very hybrid manner or private instance. And when you come to the private LTE, 5Gs, now the technologies are very, very friendly and this uh, special um, hardware coming out of the thing edge and uh, SX, um, SX M44, uh, 4425U is especially designed and specially record proofed it for, um, you can bring the Azure um, cloud to your on-prem. So you don't need to have completely relying on the cloud-based one actually act as a in-house Azure IoT locally to you and you can do the heavy lifting and heavy computing if you're going to the extensive warehouses operation pick and pack kind of warehouses um, like Ingram's internal ones and we're running some of the proof of concept in uh, our own eating our own dog food so we're running in a, uh, two different pilots in the two different warehouses in the US so, and also we work very closely with the XR motion, um, X mixed realities or extended realities. We certify quite a lot of um, um, devices, HoloLens, RealWare. And then now we are now introducing to the market for especially came out um, Lenovo's headset 
and then we combine with the multiple accessories and also services specifically validated. We validate the application on these devices to which industries and combining with the other configuration and staging um, services, auto piloting, auto configuration. So once you have and order it, unpack it, and you plug it into the system, it'll work. Especially to highlight, uh, we actually certifying and going to the market um, to think reality A3 PC edition and virtual monitor. Think about that if you if you have instead of you having multiple monitors, you can wear this uh, glass and then it'll act like a multiple monitor for you. So when you're traveling with the airport or going flying one place to another and or sitting from in the Starbucks and this is coming very handy and you can have multiple screens acting and you can play and uh, utilize it uh, in a very convenient productive manner. And then the second one we're going to the market is industrial specific edition. It is clearly um, geared towards to the industrial market, warehouses and manufacturing is highly connected to the IoT devices and um, census data is coming in overlaying top of the uh, machineries and uh, any other devices or engines. So those are the things um, we have right now. So those are the slide and highlight. I want to highlight it. Uh, Ron, you can take it from here. Thank you. Thanks, Kuna. Great presentation. All right, folks, this is the Q&A portion. I know that we've just gone through a, a lot of information. Um, if there is anyone who would like to ask a question, feel free. Hey, okay, this is Lonnie with Connected Point. And um, can you hear me? I can. Hi, Lonnie. Okay, sorry. It wasn't getting me. It seems like I was talking. But anyway, um, can we get a copy of this um, presentation? Absolutely. And then a um, couple things in particular I thought was really cool was the, uh, the Smart City stuff is definitely something we could look at. I know um, some of the other vendors are doing a, a thing right now with um, I think Ruckus has a thing where they're um, going around kind of figuring out what uh, grants and stuff like that with the COVID stuff that you can apply for and, and that could be used for IT and obviously not just Ruckus stuff but other stuff. It's something to kind of throw in the hat for that. Absolutely. And and the other thing I thought was really cool was your headset thing with the monitor. That was kind of really cool. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm happy to connect with you, Lonnie. Um, I'm happy to connect with anyone who wants to have conversations around um, any of the technology uh, solutions that, that our team have been developing for smart cities um, in manufacturing. And of course, um, Kuna and his team are happy to connect with you, uh, Lonnie, on the, the um, connectivity between the headset and the, the computer. And one of the things that we definitely, definitely wanted to point out was the vastness, um, the breadth of opportunity um, and, and innovation that Lenovo has in this space for IoT. So in those manufacturing scenarios, uh, we could be your one-stop shop and your customer's one-stop shop, um, both for efficiency and effectiveness, which is what Lenovo is known for, uh, but also for um, collecting the data and then delivering back um, what their, their end users um, of that, that data and those tools need uh, to be more productive. Were there any other questions? Well, that's okay. Um, as Melissa did mention at the outset, um, we did send out a survey yesterday. If you could feel free, or if you could during your free time, um, just give us a little bit of feedback information if this presentation delivered what you all were looking for from um, a, a IoT and IoT uh, presentation from Ingram Micro, if there were topics that we didn't touch that you'd like to hear more about, um, or like Lonnie, if you have interest in something that we said, or if you have customers in mind that you think could benefit from these uh, these types of technologies, but you're really not sure how to approach them about it, give us a call, send me an email, let me know. We're happy to get involved. We're happy to help you ask the questions that um, are maybe new to your organization around IoT and how it benefits your customers.
Awesome. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. Before we jump off, I just want to go back to one last slide. And I do appreciate your time. Oops, looks like my mouse pad is getting stuck again. There we go. All right, let me know when everyone can see my screen. So I wanted to go back to this just because I really felt like this was an important message that we wanted to deliver back uh, one more time. So all partners that have an IoT uh, data strategy portfolio will cre create new streams of revenue, and that's a fact. Um, Lenovo, as I said, we're uniquely uh, positioned in the market. There are no other x86 uh, manufacturers or other gateway manufacturers that can provide uh, the complexity and processing power at the edge as this device and this family of devices, the SE family, will for your customers who need either an isolated uh, network for protecting um, um, personal identifiable information um, or uh, who need um, that low latency and are working towards efficiencies to have more machine-to-machine -machine communication um, and really um, create major efficiency gains within their industry. And then of course, Ingram Micro it helps resellers deliver to their end customers uh, with the in industry leading IM Sense um, and all of the other services and financial support that you all know us uh, for already. So thank you for your time. Uh, we definitely appreciate all of you uh, for joining us today. As I said, feel free to contact me. Um, I'll put my information in the chat for you and um, have a great day. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you.